graffiti artist, you don't know what's going to happen by the morning. You could be in prison, you could be dead, or you could have a painting running. My dad was obsessive about trains. He used to take me to steam engine places in the country, and I just translated that love of the trains, but I added my mum's influence. She was part of the CND movement. There was a book, Subway Art, that had come over here. For the first time, people saw paintings on the side of the trains. You start to think, well, if they can do it, we can do it. She was definitely the inspiration for us in every generation, I'd say. So he has passed down that piece of himself to us. Here we are. Welcome to my playground. This is Neesden. That's a lot of history there. That's where, like, Ray's died. He got chased by police and got electrocuted. That's when I really realised, shit, this is dangerous. You can trip over, die, you can fall a height and die, get run over by a train. But that is what makes it what it is. Brilliant. Where are we getting in? All right, how often does a security guard check it? It's reconnaissance, yeah? You have to do your homework and find out. Sometimes you might go the night before and spend all night watching it. You get there, yeah? Knowing that it could all flop, someone could see you, anything could happen. There's nothing that we've never done no, to get no. to a train. We've broken concrete walls with sledgehammers. Yeah, we've gone over fences, through fences, underground. Getting through the fence, underneath the lasers, past the security guards, getting to the spot where you want to paint. When you actually spray paint on that train and you smell it, and you look left and right and you see your friends doing the same thing, it's like proper buzz. It's like there's nothing like it. We're going out now to the place where I did my first painting. Really scared, I was shaking, and I just wanted to touch the train. It was just like the beginning, it was like a sample of something much bigger. Because I knew once I'd done that, it was like I was committed to it somehow. It had a magnetism. Finishing it, yeah, is even more, it's like a cherry on top, and getting away with no one seeing. Once you're painting, you know anything can happen. You can get police on either side. You know that this can send you to jail. Police! Police! Personally, I like sometimes getting chased. And then when you get away, it's like, whoa, that was a buzz. You know you're going to go to jail. Like, for example, if we get caught now, we know we're going to go to jail. It wasn't long before police started knocking on the door. My mum was probably at her wit's end, but she never really said to me, You've got to stop doing this. She would have said, why do you keep getting caught? I've got pictures. Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff actually here. Two metal boxes that um, hold 20 years. The photograph is really important. I like to make them fairly beautiful if I can. They don't want the public to see it. They want it shut away in the sheds basically, and cleaned off as quickly as possible. Because they know how powerful it is for another person to see something like that. It's basically proving that people have overcome certain fears and constrictions about how they are told to live. And when you create a painting, it's a very symbolic, charged example of people overcoming that fear. And it helps other people realise that maybe they can also do something like that themselves, which is empowering for the individual. As the times go, whatever they throw in front of us, we'll work our way around it. We'll paint. We may not paint as long as we want to, but we'll paint. Graffiti will never die. <laughs>